Hi, I'm Shauna Slayton. I am the author of Cinderella's Dress. I'm interviewing other authors who have written Cinderella retellings, and today my guest is Tracy Barrett. She's the author of The Stepsister's Tale. Welcome, Tracy. Thank you, Shauna. Nice to be here. Your Cinderella telling has a unique twist on the stepsisters. It kind of comes at it from a different angle. Do you want it without giving away spoilers? Do you want to tell us a little bit about your story? Sure. My story is really, uh, as it, the title tells you, it's the tale of the stepsister. Cinderella isn't the main character in this one. It's really the older of the two stepsisters it's, that we all know from the fairy tale, who in my version is called Jane. And um, in this case, Cinderella is a fairly spoiled, very beautiful girl who gets moved into this step family and instantly starts complaining that they make her do all the work and that everyone's mean to her and that they hate her and she hates them. And my girl's uh, point of view is rather that everyone has to pitch in. Things aren't like they used to be. The family's poor, living in a crumbling mansion. The mother is kind of checked out of reality and so Jane and her sister Maud have to hold things together and all of a sudden there's this new girl who won't help them out. So that's really my take on it. It's, it's, what, it's what I imagine might really be behind the story. It's a blended family with the usual issues that blended families have. You know, when I read it, I thought, you know, this is like Cinderella meets Jane Austen, almost. Ooh, it kind of had that feel. Thank you. <laughs> now, how did you get the idea to put this particular twist on the story? Well, it, it really came about, um, I'm not in a blended family, but of course, like everyone, I know plenty of people who are, and I had a friend whose father had recently remarried, and she was doing the kind of complaining that one would expect and that is perfectly natural about how they didn't like her and she had to do things that they didn't have to do, and I was outwardly being sympathetic and inward, I was going, oh, poor little Cinderella, and it just struck me that you know, maybe there's another side to this story as well. I've done other retellings, and I really like examining the side of the person who's not the main person in, in the story we're familiar with. After all, nobody is a sidekick in their own life, right? Um, mm -hmm. So when you have a story about a famous, a character that, we've, that has grown famous and that we know, all the other people are kind of supporting that one character. Well, that's not anyone's life. No one is, well... No sane person is there just to support someone else. Only a neurotic person does that. So I wanted, I, I like exploring what would be the, the secondary character. I like putting in the primary position. And that's, that's what led me to this. You know, what, why do you think Cinderella is so special? Why are so many people drawn to stories of Cinderella? I think it's a fantasy that a lot of people have. Not necessarily that... Uh, that people are being awful to you, but that nobody really understands you, that they don't see the real you. And uh, whether it's with uh, uh, riches or love or uh, success in business, people sort of have the, 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 the feeling that if they really knew me, if they really could understand me, I'd have what I deserve. And um, this Cinderella, you know, if you look at it, it it's, it's been retold in, in ways that we don't really recognize always as being Cinderella. Uh, but almost any story where someone is put upon and misunderstood and suddenly comes into their own is really a Cinderella story. One example that hadn't really occurred to me until someone mentioned it is that, of course, A Little Princess by uh, Sarah Hodgson Burnett is oh, I a love that story. One. You know, it really is. And even the title should have given that away. I mean, she is a princess, and nobody knows it. But it, in, inwardly, she is. And I think it kind of resonates universally with people, that nobody really knows you. And, of course, nobody does. You, know, you can't know another person 100%. But if they did, things would be different. I think that's the, the magic of it. Yeah, I like that answer. That's a good one. Thank um, you. You know, the Cinderella story has a lot of symbols in it. There's mm -hmm. the pumpkin, the shoes, the fairy godmother, the mice. There's lots of them. Can you tell us one way that you used one of those symbols in a different way? Now, that was hard for me because I didn't want any magic in my story. There, although there's a little bit of a hint that maybe something isn't right really explainable without magic, but it, you, 
you could work around it. Almost everything is realistic. So let's see, I did work all those things into the story, and I guess uh, the pumpkin is the most famous symbol. You just have to see a pumpkin carriage and you know exactly who we're talking about. So um, I had the, uh, the, the girl, Isabella, who's the Cinderella character, her father gives her a miniature carriage that he teases her is pumpkin colored and she gets all upset and says no it's gold like the prince's carriage and uh, so it, it's not really a pumpkin but it, it echoes back to the pumpkin carriage. That was a cute scene, I like that. I thought that Thanks. was clever. Um, so what was your writing process like on this particular book? Did it flow easily? Did it take a couple of years? This book took me the longest to write of any of the books I've written, and um, it, it's, it's my 20th book, so that's saying a lot. Uh, I think from the, I can't find the first file, and it's probably on some computer that's long ago been hit, hit the landfill. I think it took me seven years to write it. Now, this doesn't mean that I sat down every day and wrote on this book for eight hours for seven years. I wrote lots of other books in the meantime, but... I, I kept not getting the heart of the story. It, then the problem was, and what the breakthrough finally was, when I realized I was still telling Cinderella's story, just mm -hmm. someone else seeing her story. And when I really made myself inhabit the personality of Jane and, see, and really tell her story with Cinderella being peripheral in a way, that's when it finally came together. But it took many, many drafts. I don't even know how many. Many, many drafts, many, many retries, um, and but when I when I got that note, and I didn't even really have to change that many things in it, uh, the incidents and episodes pretty much stayed the same. I did add a few, but it was just the tone of them had to be coming from the other side. I love hearing the background of how a story came to be. Um, yeah. Do you have Let's do you do have that. other fairy tales planned? I do. I'm working on one that's a Snow White retelling, and that one I am allowing a little magic in, but not the usual fairy tale magic. I'm making it much more historically based in a particular time and place. Uh, in it would, it's a very specific year, actually, 1210 in England, and I'm uh, tr what I'm trying to figure out here that it's the stepmother telling the story. I'm trying to figure out, of all, there are a lot of weird things about this fairy tale. Of why is she so pale? Why does she have black hair when every other fairy tale heroine is blonde? Uh, various things like that. And it's, it's a little tricky, but it's, it's a lot of fun. And I really like the stepmother so far. She's, 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 she's good. <laughs> well, I can't wait. It sounds really good. Thanks. Um, I have one last question for you. For aspiring authors out there, do you have any tips, encouragement? Yeah, I, I think um, the, the main tip I have is to find what works for you and ignore all the advice that you hear unless it works for you. Try it out and if it works, great, but if not, don't. I once on a Facebook page or listserv or someplace, someone asked a bunch of authors, what's the worst advice you ever got? And it was almost evenly split between the best advice I ever got and the worst advice I got was write every day. There are people who write every day and that's the only way they can write. There are other people like me who don't. Um, and I would say I think about writing every day, but I don't sit down and do it. Um, and that's the, the same for every piece of advice. Uh, that try it, if it doesn't work, ignore it. doesn't matter if everybody else in the world has success doing a certain thing. If you don't, you don't. The, uh, uh, Sharon Creech, who won the Newbery, panicked after she won the Newbery because she didn't really know, think she knew how to write. And she took a lot of advice and was getting all screwed up. And she complained to her agent about it. And her agent said, your process is your process. Honor it. And that's all I can say. Your process is your process. Honor it. That's great advice. All right, well, those were all of my questions, Tracy. Thank you so much for participating in the Cinderella interviews. Thank I you. look forward to reading your next book. Thanks, and you too. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.